Okay, welcome to October 5th, Mycroft DevSync. So this is our sprint planning meeting for the next couple of weeks. Uh, Chris Bear's pulled up our backlog of stuff. Looks like we've still got a couple things left to do before we're all done with everything. So <laughs> let's uh, let's go through here. And uh, before we get started assigning things to the next sprint, um, or filtering out things that have already been assigned to the sprint, uh, let's talk a little bit about the high-level goals for the sprint. Um, so, uh, the last sprint was about trying to get the Mark II enclosure uh, up and running, and uh, we had uh, two activities around the wakeboard tagger. Uh, one was uh, getting the database uh, side of things squared away and then starting work on the implementation for the, uh, the tagger itself. And uh, we got one of those uh, done, but we haven't started work on the tagger yet. Uh, so I think we should continue with that work. I think this is a, a good time period while we're waiting for the next spin of the SJ201s to come in. Um, so I think we should, you know, get right on that right away. Um, and I've got uh, I've got some some ideas about how, how to do that in a minute. Um, and uh, and on the hardware side, um, I don't actually know that there's anything for us to do right now until the hardware comes back. Uh, but um, but I do want to make sure that if we get boards back, uh, you know, before the end of the sprint, that we know exactly what we're going to do with them, right? So uh, so I want to make sure that we've got uh, the, the priorities with respect to that setup. Um, so with that being said, does anybody else have any opinions or ideas or remembrances of things that we've promised that we would do? Well, my, my question is, did we actually get everything done in the last sprint that needed to be done? Do we have SJ201s integrated and operational and running the full stack? Uh, that cast question is for Kat. Yeah, so um, all the SJ201 specific code, the LEDs, the volume control, and the switches are completed. Uh, I have not put the pull request up yet because I'm not sure if we want to include the post stuff, the power on self tests in the enclosure code for that pull request. So uh, the code's done and it's working. Uh, I'd like to get the new SJ201s in to verify that because the one I have is the one with the external amp and so I can't test the volume. But other than that, yeah, the code's done. I'm actually moving on to the power on diagnostic stuff. So yes, the answer for that is yes. Okay, and so my next question is for Chris Veyer and Derek and maybe Gez, which is there's a big piece of that hardware integration that involves simply the Pi 4, which is, you know, getting the Wi-Fi to come online, getting it to, um, you know, all of the stuff that's related to the operating system level or the, the com compute module, let's call it, um, as opposed to the sound card, which is what the SJ201 effectively is. So is that, um, is that, squared away, can we do a demo today of us taking the Pi 4 and putting an image in and getting it up on Wi-Fi and so on and so forth? Wi-Fi, no. Um, it, I think what we've been doing and what the current plan is, is we, you can just use the existing Kiwi image and everything should work just fine, um, except for maybe the screen orientation. So yeah, I think that's, we haven't really been, I haven't really taken any time, I've been working on the tagger, so I haven't taken any time to um, try to boot mine up and see, you know, if there is anything that's a problem um, as far as that image running on my device. But, um, well, that, that's a good point too. The code I have runs on Kibi. I haven't tested it on QT. Yeah, so. I, there's two things we could do. We could we could we could plug in a QT image and see how well. And this is maybe something we should do while we're in Hawaii. Is you know compare the two, or maybe we do it before we go. But you know, what what can each do? What where what are the pluses and minuses of each? That kind of thing. Yeah, I, I did undertake it to this well, sprint um, for benchmarking uh, resource usage, resource usage of the two of them, because um, I know that's been a big. Um, question from from everyone is like how much resource does do they both take and is that is that going to be a problem so uh, <coughs> that's one of the things that I wanted to do in this sprint so that we 
we could help move that ball forward so that we are closer to making a decision on that. And when we do get the boards, we can move forward more quickly. I had a conversation okay, so this morning with Aditya, actually. And uh, we spent about half hour, 45 minutes going over that. And, you know, um, uh, so I've got some information to report there. But I think that's actually something that we could ask them for. Uh, he relayed some very encouraging information to me uh, regarding the resource utilization of Qt versus Kibi. Um, and also uh, about their commitment to the project as well. So um, made me feel a lot better about uh, taking on Qt as the official uh, GUI that we support going forward. Uh, but I, you know, I'd like I would like to get some of that stuff in writing. You know, we, we, it was really a um, you know, we got into some of the details, but not necessarily all of the details that we identified in the in the matrix of things to evaluate. So maybe we could just ask him for some help on that. I know he I know he watches and, and listens to these. So maybe he'll yeah, I was out. I was actually I was actually going to suggest that we get with Aditya and have them do the work. I agree with I agree with Michael there. If, if they've made a big investment in it, um, they're you know between the plasma image and uh, everything else, there's a lot a lot that's happened over there. So you know if I'm in the <laughs> shoes, I would want to make my my commitment you know, to be the default. So um, since we don't really have a lot of personnel resources to chase that and they've already made a big investment, then let's ask them to go ahead and benchmark the stuff so that we can have a little bit more visibility. My next question is, does this kill the company? So in other words, does the decision we make between Kibi and Q, does it kill the company if we go the wrong way? I don't think so. It may jeopardize uh, our community involvement, uh, which is a, well. A if we deal. if we kill the community, that kills the company. So that that would be a deal killer. But is, is beyond that, is there a like is there a technical reason why? Oh my God! If we select, you know, Beta Max, we're done. No. Okay, then I would argue that we should make this decision quickly and move on. We just got so much time. We've only got so much time, and this is slowing us down. But we can have a separate meeting about that. We can crank it out here. We can. I mean, I know that these meetings have a tendency to get into this subject like every week. Yeah. Yeah, I do look forward to having this resolved. Um, let's just take an item to uh, uh, forward all the all of the stuff that we've talked about, all the questions that we've compiled. Uh, let's forward that to Aditya and see if we can get him to. Uh, help us out on that. Okay, Gez, is that on your plate? Yeah, um, Derek and I meet with them every week, so um, we'll chat to him in about 12 hours or so. So, okay. um, and he's on, yeah. he's in your time zone, yeah. Uh, not at the moment, he's um, he's stuck overseas, um, because Australia has a limit on how many people they'll let back in the country every day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, um, I've been kind of yeah. in and out, but so a couple of things. One, I don't know if Gez may have mentioned this, but we've kind of already planted the seed there. We talked about it last week about setting up some benchmarking stuff. Um, but also, I have ran Qt on um, SJ201 with a Pi 4 and did Wi-Fi setup and stuff, uh, and it worked. So we do know that at least. <laughs> okay. Michael, is it appropriate for me to check out the cute image, install it, and uh, get this stuff working on that and make sure there's no issues, or is that still downstream? I think it's. You know, if we need to go that route, I think we can go there later, unless you think it's going to affect the power and self-test work. Oh, now you're muted. Sorry. I don't think it's going to affect the power on self-test stuff or hardware. Uh, I am planning on putting a, a module check in to make sure that all necessary modules have been installed during power on self-test. There might be some issues there, but no. And I and I suspect 
everything What's that? Sorry, this is here. We're going over Airbnb stuff. Anticipating any problem. So I, I certainly believe we can push it off, uh, possibly even until the summit. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's just not do any work that we don't have to do until uh, until we have to do it. Okay. <coughs> hey, Josh, just flagging. I muted you because we were getting a lot of stuff. So you might need to go to your computer at some point. No, I, I can do it from my headset. I just need to remember to do it. Okay, so our just as a reminder, the description for Sprint 16 is going to be get the wakeboard tagger online. That's that's the number one new thing, um, and then the other thing is, um, what is the other thing? Is there another thing? Oh, we need to be ready for the Mark II, the next the next SJ 201 revision to come back. So, okay, oh, uh, are we are are we settled on the? form factor, Derek, like you're not going to be moving any holes around or anything? Uh, we, had, we went ahead and did move the holes, I think. Yeah, so for, for this design, we should be good, <laughs> hopefully. But are we are we settled on, can we start working plastics because the, the what I'm seeing, I don't have like a fancy Gantt chart, but what my little internal clock is telling me is that if we don't get, if we don't get plastics out to the mold maker, we're going to end up having a pile of SJ-201s and no plastic enclosures to put them in. Well, right, but we have to do some basic uh, engineering stuff before we can, I mean, I can get quotes and stuff, but there could be, you know, we might need more ventilation, we might need, you know, we've got to pass some, some engineering hurdles before we pull the trigger. But yeah, we can get quotes moving. Okay, but that means we need to get, I mean, we need to get plastics design going. Do we have a, do we have, so the, Michael, this spin of SJ-201s is going to have all the holes in it and everything's going to be the way that it's going to be when we go to production? Yes, the physical form factor should not change. So we should, so Derek, once we've, once they've frozen that, you and I should get going, like we should start. I mean, we should start printing and cutting and drilling and, and sanding and get unit one done so that we can do DFM and get the get the molds cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, we, we need to start cranking up our printers and, and making parts, yes. I'm literally cleaning my my wash station now. Um and this is uh, this is your resonating chamber that you sent me. So so yeah, because I, I don't want that to be, I'm concerned that that will be the holdup, right? That we'll have everything else done electronically and software wise, and it'll be like, hey, you're, you know, zero tolerance is another eight weeks out. Are we going to use zero tolerance or do you want to use somebody else? Well, I mean, I think it, it, there's a lot of things that we got to decide. You know, we want to decide on how long we want the mold to last. Um, we want it to be a 10,000 or 20,000 shot mold and, you know, yes. and we're done. Um, aluminum molds, we don't have, we don't have $400,000 to buy steel molds. So there'll be aluminum molds. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've got another possible route of molder in Kentucky that uses uh, China to actually cut the molds, but they do the, they do the injection molding in Kentucky. Um, might be a little cheaper, um, <clears throat> but there's I, there's, a little, there's a couple of different things that I would like to do. For example, right now when we're looking, you know, this could be this could be a whole separate discussion too. By the way, so Michael, do you need to come? Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that, I think it is a whole separate discussion. Um, yeah. I, I was actually looking into. <clears throat> excuse me, I've been looking into um, uh, some software along these lines. Yeah when we get into managing our inventory and manufacturing process and that sort of thing. So if anybody has any uh, uh, favorite software of that sort uh, that they'd like to uh, have us consider, that would be, uh, that'd be appreciated. But. Yes, so I, my, my ideal situation has always been we find a PCB um, specialty full product assembler to like 
their number one best thing they do is PCBs, but they can handle the full assembly of the product and do all the testing. Um, and it seems like one of the companies that kind of fits in the small production um, role, like one of the companies that we've been quoting recently. Oh, I gotta go. <laughs> All right, so we'll table that for, for now. Um, let's get into the Sprint 16 planning here. Um, I think uh, we don't need to go through, this is gonna take forever to go through this line by line and there's a lot of people on the call. So um, let's, uh, maybe everybody can pull up the same backlog and we can skim through it and um, everyone can individually go through and, and add in uh, or take out the issues that they think um, don't belong here. Um, so in particular, you know, we want to leave in all of the stuff for, uh, for the wakeboard tiger, for sure. Um, and, uh, and then we should prioritize the things for the, for the Mark II uh, that depend on the, the, the SJ201 bring up. And we probably should add in a few more uh, tasks here. Now that Kevin's uh, in our system, uh, we can add in you know some of the dependencies that he's going to be working on in terms of what he's going to do to bring up the the SJ two hundred one and make sure that it, it works. You know, test all of the subsystems and and all of that good stuff. Um, we don't have to do that all right here in real time though. Um, the uh, what I would like to talk about though is um, how do we uh, approach the wakeboard tiger and I think this is there's maybe a, an opportunity here or maybe not to uh, try some development stuff that we haven't done recently at least uh, in terms of getting uh, two people working on the same system um, so uh, Ken um, are you would you be comfortable working on the uh, on the web stuff relating to the uh, the wakeboard tiger does that fall on your, your bailiwick? Uh, well, I mean, I, I can learn anything, but the back end is something called Cellini, so I'd have to come up to speed on that, but yeah, sure. Well, I was wondering, actually, so my question is, would it be useful to consider maybe you and Chris doing uh, uh, some part of the sprint or some part of your days of the sprint, doing some pair programming, or having one of you doing maybe uh, the uh, design for, uh, sorry, the <laughs> getting all my acronyms mixed up. Um, uh, so one of you working on the test stuff, and the other one working on the uh, the actual code, you know that sort of thing. Where it's you know two people working on the same system, uh, and um, you know complementing each other. Uh, I wonder if that might be something that we could consider for this particular um, sprint. I'm flexible. I, I mean, I <coughs> I assume the power on self diagnostics can can wait. So yeah, I can I can certainly pair up with Chris this uh, sprint on this stuff. Chris, any thoughts? I mean, I don't, I don't yeah. have a particular suggestion in terms of like how exactly to do it, but it seems like it's it's work. You know, I know Ken some done uh, done some of this work in the past, uh, and so um, I just thought that maybe he could help uh, make things more efficient for you, and maybe you know offload some of the. The testing code, or you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, we can certainly give it a whirl. All right. Well, it's just yeah. To... I think that I think that makes sense. I'll I'll get with Chris in the morning, and uh, I'll start sketching out some of the VK tests. Uh, you know, under guidance from Chris, and uh, we can get the Chris can be working on the development while I'm working on the testing stuff. So that certainly uh, can be done in that manner. Okay, great. Um, so I was also have... wondering if uh, I was just wondering if um, if I should be pushing some review tasks to Ken instead of Chris. It's kind of I've been defaulting pushing things to Chris. <coughs> he, he knows the systems the most, but um, this just sort of continues the same problem where we consolidate everything under the same people. Yeah, I think it makes sense to push some of those reviews to me, specifically since really uh, Chris is the linchpin this uh, sprint. So we want to keep him focused on the tagging stuff. Uh, I can certainly do the uh, testing stuff as well as some code reviews and things like that. And yeah, I don't, I don't see there being an issue, but you know, I think we should try to 
keep Chris free because he's got a lot of work this spring. Okay. Is the is the tagging stuff going into production this sprint? Well, that would be an idea. No. Well, wait a second. <laughs> well, I, I would be surprised if it would be done before the end of the sprint, but that's certainly um, a noble objective. Well, what, uh, okay, so Josh, you said into production, and then Chris, you said no. So, uh, Josh, what is your interpretation of interproduction first? Uh, we have the entire machine learning loop closed. So somebody goes to their unit to say Mycroft, it, as a data volunteer, it just flows into the appropriate folder. You know, that gets flagged in the Cellini system as something that needs to be tagged. It flows through. Uh, first tagging and a validation, um, it gets fed into the data set and we hit a button somewhere and retrain the wake word tagger. And importantly, we evaluate the resulting model against the existing model to determine which one's better and whichever one's better we push to the remote devices. And do, right, doing that for him. Well, let me give you doing one, that for hey, sure. me one doing that modification for, or, or alteration to what you just said. So mm -hmm. nobody pushes the button uh, each night, um, possibly at midnight, uh, who knows what time. A script, a cron job kicks off. It does a query against the database. It reaches a determination on threshold, threshold being met and automatically kicks off the machine learning process. The only manual intervention that would be in the system would be if the new trained model outperformed the, the current default model, then that's where the process is kind of left at right now because only because there's no send mail running on the training server. Otherwise I would have emailed out the notification to a distribution list. So everything you said is done except for the actual um, and the notification at the end if it's deemed the model needs to be promoted. But there's no there's no manual intervention until the determination is made that a model needs to be promoted. Okay, and then the next step of that is that same exact process for arbitrary wake word. Well, there's two additional steps. So so that, that process for arbitrary wake word, so somebody goes and says, hey, Judy, and they add it to Cellini, and it automatically steps, sets up that entire flow for a Hey Judy wake word, so that's item one. That is not essential and not mission critical, but it would make us, it would be a significant differentiator for our company against the other companies in this space. That's number one. And then number two would be uh, using a, a transfer learning mechanism on the device as part of the skill so that the end user can contribute 10 or 20 utterances and using transfer learning, uh, in, in, in integrate those utterances into the resulting model. So my guess is those two things won't be done immediately, but they should be somewhere in the backlog. Yeah, I think it's safe to say they won't be done in the next two weeks. Okay, but do you think we can get the first thing done in the next two weeks? Because that's a, I think it's a pretty, we spent a lot of time on it, and I think I, I have a great deal of faith and confidence in you guys that you can do it in that time frame. Do you think we can push to do it? And is, if so, is there a place that I can be helpful? That's a interesting question. I still think there's a lot to do. I think we might get this built in this print, but it's not going to put up in this print. Um, there are going to be a handful of API calls that have to be written, tests, a couple screens that have to be modified. Um, I haven't looked at the Cellini code in the UI for a while. Um, we haven't figured out uh, how we're going to have samples, samples tagged yet or how we're going to select samples to be tagged. We haven't figured out how we're going to do the um, prioritization of, you know, of, of the tag depending on another. There's just there's still a lot of questions with this. And I, if they were all answered, then maybe that would be singing a different tune, but I just don't think you know, two weeks is enough time to figure out the stuff and get it coded and get it into production. Okay. Well, 
the benefit of using agile is we can give it a shot. If we don't get there, then we move it to the next sprint. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's a good, it's a good goal. I, my personal goal would be to get this built in the next two weeks because there's a lot to do. Um, so what if what you, oh. without some of these questions being answered? Not completely. Actually, it might not be a bad idea, Chris, to enumerate the questions, and, and maybe we just meet first thing in the morning and get them answered. It sounds like that's somewhat significant for you to be able to move forward. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the two big things I think are how we're going to select samples to be tagged. There's got to be something written for that. I don't know. I know there's some ideas. I think Michael's probably got some, and um, and Ken, maybe you have some. But you know, how we, we pop up a, um, you know, what's the how do we pick the next one to throw on the screen? Um, and what was the other one? Uh, the other one's just defining I mean, the uh, you know what what tags are there and how do they relate to each other? Um, yeah, so the the answer to the first question, I mean, if I was gonna simplify it would be the oldest first. The oldest untagged samples, but I suspect you have more questions around what exactly the UI is going to require of you regarding what classifications are we actually tagging? Um, is that where you were going? In other words, high, low, wake word, not wake word, stuff like that? Well, yeah, that's, I mean, the, I, I have a pretty decent idea of how the screens look and how they're going to look. I've got a pretty decent idea of, um, you know, what the database needs to look like. Um, but yeah, we need to probably delineate what tags we're looking for. Because um, then if we, you know, the, the oldest first um, doesn't get us the the nice spread that we were talk that we talked about in the past too. So, you know, if we have 5,000 samples from one person who was, you know, user number one, um, we we would actually my understanding is that we would prefer to tag a single sample from every user than five thousand samples from the same user, um, and so <coughs> there's a, a few things like that that might help. With yeah, the, we've, we've outlined a lot of these requirements in the documentation already, so I think we need to go through hmm. that and uh, and design a system, just come up with an algorithm that satisfies those requirements. Yeah, I mean, I can stub in something that just you know pulls something from the database and throws it on the screen. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff I can do without these, some of these questions being answered, but um, you need to get them figured out before I can call it done. Okay. Do we have the working UI screens already mocked up regarding uh, the initial process flow or are they TBD? Um, Derek has got me um, something close um, enough that I can get if I know what the what the tags are, I can I can get them pretty well defined. And basically, the idea is the screen stays the same for every different type of tag, and just the information changes on them. Um, and so we determine the initial tags are what, other than wake word or not wake word. That no, that I don't know. I don't know what we want to. And that was a question I just asked. You know, what what yeah, tag do you want to find initially? Okay. I thought we'd been over this ad nauseum. We haven't been. Yeah, I, I think we have, but uh, it depends on, on on how you see it. But I actually, Chris, I I don't. I actually think it's a great idea to stub out the algorithm that we're talking about here. Just use a dumb algorithm. Get the whole system working with a, you know, whatever obvious easy to implement algorithm there, there is for choosing which wake words to tag. We'll just get the system working and then we can make the algorithm better, you know, as the next pass, right? That's that's the way yeah. to get everything up and running quickly. So let's not worry, let's not let the, the exact algorithm uh, 
hold us up on making progress on the system. While you know, uh, we can make progress on getting the whole system up and running, while we're you know we have uh, some design meetings around exactly what the algorithm should be, and and taking another look at all the requirements that we that we have, as Josh points out, talked about at Nalcyon. <coughs> okay. I can do that. Cool. I just I just want to manage expectations because I'm getting yep. into production. Yeah, I, I mean, no, it's, it's in all fairness, Chris, we've talked about it a lot. I don't know that we've solidified any answers, but right. certainly getting started with maybe, I don't know, a maximum of 10 users starting with the old users. Uh, and just bagging on wake word, not wake word for now. Uh, and then, I don't know, maybe Derek had it designed as a series of binaries, it's beginning to sound like. So the first binary would be wake word, not wake word. Maybe the next binary might be high or low pitched. I don't know. We, we got rid of the binary idea, actually. It's it's going to be, you know, like one screen will be, is this a wake word? And you'll actually have like four options, you know. No, it's not. There's multiple. Yes, it is, or it's something similar. I mean, the other thing that I think is is kind of a uh, it throws a monkey wrench into it is whether we're going to start dealing with larger samples that have many words in them and trying to break them up and re-pass them back through. I. I don't know if I'd be for that the first iteration. I try to keep it simple and. Yeah, I think we just for now we just tag them as having multiple and and, re, and iterate on that later. Yeah. yeah. I, okay. I mean, we can take that as a first pass, but I think that pass one point two is going to be oh hey we have to actually solve this problem because every single sample has multiples in it. That's just my thought. A prediction, if you will. <laughs> Yeah, let's let's blow through this quickly. We we we've gotten kind of jammed up a little bit on the dev side, um, and you know the we've got a limited runway. But you know, with with Michael's fundraising effort and some of the other things that have happened, um, we have a really clear path towards towards actually shipping this thing and being successful and like being relevant. Um, but only if we speed things up, we have to move faster uh, from a calendar perspective. We just have to. And, and, you know, it's, it's, I know everybody's been working hard and there's a limited amount of time that people can kind of work at this startup pace. But it, in my view, we need to go back to this kind of insane startup pace for a couple of, just a couple of months, maybe two, three months total through the end of the year until these things start shipping, at which point, you know, we, we become, we go into maintenance mode and, and start incrementing and improving. Like we're, we're really close to having a product shipping. Um, it's kind of like the video game companies with the, what do they call it? The crunch or whatever, where we're getting really close. We just need to, up, you know, apply some gasoline or some 91% pure alcohol would probably work fine. Remind me not to strike a spark in here. Yeah, and I don't think we necessarily, you know, need to start a death march just yet. We'll we'll get there, but um, <laughs> the uh, but I would like to, you know, take this approach of of doing things in passes, you know, especially with this agile development approach, which is not my, uh, my not my forte. But you know, the, the the goal here should be to get a version up and running as fast as possible, right? And then we'll add features to it as we go, right? So one of the features is, you know, having a good algorithm for picking which things to tag, right? Uh, so by starting off, we just have an algorithm, whatever Chris can code that you know isn't totally brain dead, but something that actually functions, right? You know, so that we're not tagging the same wake word over and over again. Other than that, you know, just make it work. We'll make it better. We'll make it better later. Um, and you know, ideally, we can get through a bunch of uh, iterations like that within a sprint. Right. If we can get the whole system up and running within, you know, the first, you know, half of the sprint or so, then we can spend the next, you know, next half of the sprint making it better. Um, and sure, I don't think we'll necessarily get to the point where that won't necessarily make things faster in terms of getting a, uh, you know, production-ready uh, system. 
online any faster. Uh, but um, but I think it will definitely help us with the perception of uh, of progress, and getting us used to uh, you know to getting things done and then and then continuously improving them. The uh, the one the, the one difference that I well not difference I guess it, one thing I do want to keep in mind though is that I don't want to take a hasty approach to doing this in the sense of uh, we're going to hack this and it's going to be you know a bunch of spaghetti code at the end of it right I want to do it right um, and uh, you know especially with respect to des testing and with respect to documentation so those 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 are the caveats uh, when it comes to you know doing things quickly. So, okay. I will do my best. Great. Um, okay. um, one quick thing that I just thought of is that ideally uh, the samples shouldn't be provided chronologically sequential. Um, because if someone is doing, you know, if, if their device is triggering over and over again, and then you start to be able to like just listen into an entire uh, conversation, and I know that's something that's happened in the past. So, I think you know, just some kind of random, you know, just adding adding a random call to the um, to the algorithm would be good. Okay, that's a good thought. Yeah, I mean, a lot of ways to do that it could be randomization. It could just be you know, tag more than one thing from the same user, and you know, except out of one one out of every ten samples or something like that. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, you guys can figure that out. But that's a good that's a good warning about unintended consequences of sharing data. You know, along those lines, we could add, in fact uh, maybe institute some policies if we find that it's actually becoming a problem. Um, institute some policies around just leaving out a percentage of samples. You know, just say, hey, we, we will never tag these. Like. We don't tag odd number samples from each user, you know, something like that. Uh, okay, so uh, do we have enough information to construct this sprint now? <coughs> um, I'm just glancing through it real quick. Uh, Everything that's tagged with purple relates to the wake word collection, so we can keep all that in here. Anything that's not tagged purple, we should look at it uh, to see if it's important for the SJ201 bring up. And if it's not, then we should punt it into 17. Yeah, so a lot of those are mine. One one I wanted to flag is core 331. Currently doesn't have anyone associated to it. Um, so that, that came out of the ask yes, no rollover stuff. Mm. Um, something that we, we should do you know, before we ship them our two devices, <laughs> but definitely, but um, it doesn't need to happen right now, I don't think. We should put a tag on that as opposed, uh, you know, with respect to what it's, what it's associated with, right? I mean, that seems like it could be a user experience issue in terms of making it mm -hmm. more user friendly, but it also might be a functionality issue. Um, you know, if it's if it's too slow, it might actually be unusable. In which case, it's not just a user experience thing. It's a, you know, it's a real problem. Um, so, for example, like Ken was noting that we can't uh, talk over Mycroft when it's talking to us. We can talk over Mycroft when it's playing music, right? But you can't talk over it to say, okay, you know, stop telling me that. Um, so that might, yeah. you know, that might be. Well, I mean, technically, you can. There. Yeah, yeah, I won't get into the detail there. <laughs> but, but yeah, I'll tag it with user experience for now. Um, it's okay. like the best tag that we have, I think. But from a high level, it sounds like what we're doing is we're putting a full court press on the wake word tagging process, which seems to dovetail nicely with the fact that we won't have new hardware for possibly a week or two. And then when that sprint, when this sprint ends, we can basically put a full court press on everything hardware related, right? Exactly. You meet Josh's goal of trying to get this thing in a shippable condition ASAP. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we'll get as far as we can with the wake word tagger and it'll, um, you know, and then we'll take, 
we'll see where we are and what it takes to get it into production. But you know, that'll you know if that bleeds into the next sprint, then it bleeds into the next sprint. But um, what I really want to do is get it into a maintenance mode where it's just one of the things where we're you know occasionally adding features to or fixing bugs with, just like you know precise or mimic or any of the other parts. Um, okay, so Gez makes a good point. Uh, a lot of his uh, activity isn't necessarily reflected in the WakeWord collection, uh, so we should expand our uh, eyes to uh, the 20.8.1 probably. Or, or what, are, what are your issues well, typically going to be talking about? A lot about? of it, I mean, the a lot of it at the moment is around um, improving our CI, improving the stability of our CI builds. Um, because, you know, we've just got a bunch of little niggly things that are sometimes failing and, and um, so getting those ironed out is going to help us move quicker. Um, and then the other things are like helping progress the community, community side of things, um, you know, merging PRs, just slowly, slowly getting through our community contributions. I have to keep remembering to mute Josh all the time. Um, I, I don't know so if you yeah. know how noisy that stuff is, Josh. I also wonder if it's worth noise. doing a project rollover epic so that we can tag those things because they need to stay on there. Yes. Yeah, good point. Uh, yeah, Josh, we keep muting you because uh, I don't know if you realize quite how noisy that stuff sounds to the rest of us. Uh, so just be aware. Um, the Michael, I'll, I'll create a new ticket for the uh, for the uh, testing stuff for this prop for this sprint. As okay, well. good. That's my good call. my headset is was muted, so I don't know what's sending you sound. So anyway, sorry. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, so yes, for for tickets on your side, um, we should. Um, Create some tickets, just like you can. A couple ideas. Maybe create some tickets around um, about around managing pull requests for the sprint. You know, whatever your target is, uh, or if there are specific pull requests that you're looking at. Um, you know, I know you've put some of the major ones in there, uh, when you're, like dealing with like lingua franca and the, um, the um, modules, the plugin system, and stuff like that, right? So, so those those kinds of things should be on the on the board as well. Um, but if you want to create like a generic ticket for like, you know, review the incoming pull requests, uh, uh, it'd be good to know it just, just as a reminder that you're working on those things. You don't have to like list the specifics of every single one of them that you're looking at. Cool. <sighs> okay. So, um, can everyone take a look through this real quick uh, in the backlog and push anything that you don't think belongs in the sprint over to 17, and we'll, uh, and then, uh, you know, in, let's say uh, in 15 minutes or so, we can push this, uh, we can, we'll start the sprint. Actually, you know what, we can go ahead and start the sprint now. Um, and you can always push things to the next sprint, whatever. Yeah, we don't care about velocity and all that kind of stuff, and it doesn't really matter when yeah. things are moved. <laughs> exactly. But that, that, if we get any further into Agile, it'll make a, make a, make a difference. Right. All right, I'm starting it now. OK, so unless there's any other business people think we need to talk about, uh, we can call it here and just uh, spend the next few minutes going through the sprint and making sure that everything in there is is relevant and if not uh, push it out and uh, we will meet again tomorrow or Wednesday depending on who we are <laughs> Chris V I'll, I'll uh, get with you in the morning and uh, go over some of the VK test stuff and what my strategy is and what I'm planning on doing to make sure it's okay with you okay sure Hey, Derek, can you stay on for a minute? Sure. Okay. Thanks, everybody.